My name is Teddy Jacobson of Actions by T. I am a trigger specialist and work on over 100 different models of handgun actions. This tape will be about the disassembly and reassembly procedure of all Smith & Wesson revolvers. I will explain the old models as well as the new models in very clear detail. I have decided to make all these tapes because I want to show people the correct way to do things as I have read so much information that is wrong. My only intent is honesty and integrity. Should you want to clean your revolver piece by piece, this video will teach you how to take it all apart. I will cover gunsmithing and tools in detail on future tapes. I do not use conventional gunsmithing tools and procedures. I have always looked for better tools and better methods and better cleaners and lubricants. Most of my tools I make or have made in a local machine shop. I would like to discuss the tools with you first. This tool will be used to remove the rebound slide of a Smith & Wesson revolver. Uh, it, I use this for taking the rebound slide out. And um, I use this tool with the black handle for reinserting the rebound slide. So I use one to take it out and a different tool to reinstall it. Otherwise, uh, there's, there's problems using this tool only. Using this tool only would be a real problem uh, reinstalling it. Uh, it it's real easy with, uh, to reinstall the rebound slide if you use this tool. I made this myself out of a snap-on screwdriver. I use a hammer that has a nylon head on one side and a brass head on the other side. You don't need much hammer weight. This is one of the smallest hammers you can get. And these heads are replaceable so that you, they unscrew when they get chewed up and you just put in new heads. It lasts you a lifetime. My screwdrivers, I always use ratcheting screwdrivers to save the wear on my hands. These are snap-on ratchet screwdrivers. And the tips are made for gun screws only. They're not conventional screwdriver tips. They, they fit in there, they're magnetized, and they're replaceable. Uh, a screwdriver like this is about $40. I use a very special kind of needle nose plier. These have no teeth but they're super slim and I get these from jewelry supply houses. You cannot get a, a pair of pliers like this from a gunsmith supply house. These, uh, these work quite well. I use a dental pick occasionally and uh, you can get these uh, from your local dentist or a dental supply house. And, um, uh, some of the dentists will sell you their used tools or you can just buy them uh, new from a supply house. They're, they're relatively inexpensive. I use a 1 16th inch pin punch. These happen to be snap-on punches, but they work very well. I'll go into the detail of these punches on Tools for the Gunsmith on another tape. Uh, it'll be a future tape. Uh, this is essential for some critical uh, pins, uh, for the removal of critical pins. This is a tool that's used to take apart the cylinder. This is uh, made by Ron Power. One side will uh, remove uh, the, the extractor rod on a Smith & Wesson. The other side 
will remove the extractor rod on, on other type uh, revolvers. But today would just be Smith & Wesson's. This is a, uh, a similar tool made by a different company. And uh, I'll show you how it works as we proceed. Sometimes I use a little jeweler's type screwdriver. Uh, these come in awfully handy to uh, manipulate little springs. I use a small screwdriver. I usually either buy snap-on or craftsman type little screwdrivers. They work very well. These are my trigger pull gauges where I can check the trigger pull gauge, uh, the trigger pull on, on any handgun, uh, whether it's a revolver or a semi-auto. Each one of these is, is, this one goes up to 12 pounds, from zero to 12 pounds, and this other one that I use goes up to 25 pounds. So for the lower ranges, I use the other one. For the double action pulls, I use this one. They're probably uh, about 60 to 65 dollars a piece. When you uh, take a cylinder apart, as I'll show you, if you didn't want to use tools like this, you could also get away with just using empty cases. I'll explain all this. Uh, two empty cases is all you really need to take apart a cylinder. This is an end frame Smith & Wesson revolver. And what I show you on this gun will apply to the K, L, and N frame. This is the older model. And the, uh, the newer models are quite different. But um, I'll explain it all in detail. We're going to take this gun apart now. And I'll go step by step and show you exactly what to do. These have aftermarket grips on it. These are hoe grips. And so they come off a little differently. When you have a factory grip, the factory puts a screw somewhere in the middle of the grip here. Hogue puts a, a screw on the bottom. So it's a little different in, in the reassembly procedure. Uh, Hogue makes a good grip, there's no question. Some of the older frames uh, don't fit the newer Hogue wood grips very well because the dimensions have changed. So you, you uh, just be use caution. Now to remove, the gr to remove the grip, I'm going to take this screw out. All I've done was to, as you can see, I'm taking this screw out of the bottom of the grip. Now this whole grip, all it does is pull down. It just pulls down. On the newer Smiths, you can see there are three plate screws. There's one here, which is a flat screw, because this is underneath the grip. And these have round heads. We're going to remove these through three screws. Now on this side of the revolver, this is a cylinder release. We're going to take that screw out also. I'm going to proceed to take these screws out. Now on the older Smiths, this screw has been fitted. The new Smiths are different. They're spring-loaded. They have a spring-loaded plunger. But this screw has been fitted, so I'm going to segregate and put this screw separately so I don't confuse it with the other round head screw. So we'll, we'll put that over here. I'm removing the other two screws that I showed you.
Now to get this plate off, 